we cannot recommend any remediation unless we do a test. And with that assessment, that's what we use for the insurance company in order to open up coverage. And then with the remediation, it has to be done properly. You know, a lot of people think it's just like your ordinary demo time, and it's not. When people really start to see how it's affecting everyday people in their everyday lives, that's when this nonsense it, it will get corrected. It just won't be anytime soon. So it, it's just a matter of just holding on and we continue to help these clients. We're going to continue to show overwhelming evidence that this incident happened, how it happened, why it happened, and this is what we need to recommend to get it resolved. Mold, mold, mold. I don't think we talk about it enough. Mold coverage. When do you claim it? When do you show it to the insurance company? How do you document it? How do you present it? How do you photograph it? How do you take care of it? How do you get rid of it? That's what we're going to talk about in the Claims Gate podcast today with my great friend, uh, Andres Belen. Andres Belen and his wife are the owners of All Star Servicing West. They are located in the Sarasota area, and we've known each other now for about three years or so. And Andres has been on this commercial claims advocate train from the beginning. So I consider him a very close friend of mine and one that I have referred countless amount of claims to and one who has taught me a lot about what this whole mold area, this mold side of the claims business is about? What are the limits about? And just how does it get remediated? And we get into all that stuff. I told him, I said, he does mitigation. He does water mitigation. He does tarping, but he's very knowledgeable with mold. And I thought it would be best that we talk about that today because it could be a little bit complicated as to sort of what's going on. So we get into a lot of cool things that I don't think you would have ever known without listening to this show. So if you haven't listened to this show before, this is an episode you're going to want to listen to in regards to mold coverage and sort of the things that go on when mold occurs in a home. Or well, if you should, it, there's a lot of stuff. You're going to want to listen to it. So let's get right into it. Claims Gate Podcast with my good friend, Andres Berlin from All Star Serving Sing West. Let's go in three, two, one. Welcome to the Claims Game Podcast with Vince Perry. Get all the tips you need from insurance claim advocates and professionals and grow your public adjusting career to the next level. And now the commercial claims advocate, Vince Perry. We are here with one of the OGs, the original one of the original friends, acquaintances, uh, job partners, entrepreneurial, executive, friendship. Ama- I can't even think of all the words, but Andres Belen of All Star Servicing West is back on the show with me for a second time so that we can talk shop and really get down and dirty with mold and other stuff. Additional living expenses is one of the most difficult parts of an insurance claim. And the reason is, is it's very high pressure. And as a public adjuster or contractor, you're already dealing with the negotiating of the build back process. You don't want to have to deal with ALE as well. Black Diamond Housing Services does all of that. They don't even charge the client. They bill it directly to the insurance company. It's all covered under the ALE coverage. So you need to call Black Diamond if you have a house that has been severely lost, whether it's like severe mold, severe water, fire, anything like that, where they need a place to stay, Call Black Diamond Housing Services and they'll be able to take care of your client from beginning to end. Are you tired of waiting forever in a day to get paid on your insurance claim? Are you tired of having to drive to the insured's house that you can pick up your check and give them a check? What if we could take all of this away from you by using InkPay? InkPay is a godsend to our company. Everything is handled electronically. You take a photo of the check, you upload it directly into their software, and they take care of everything else. And the best part is the money gets directly deposited into your account. And when there's a mortgage company on there, they handle the entire mortgage company process as well. You have to call InkPay. It's been a game changer in my company. I strongly recommend them and I want you to go ahead and find them and use it in your company so you could streamline your payment process after the claim gets paid. We're back. We're definitely back. It's, it's been quite a while. I made a lot of big moves since then. Um, very happy to say I'm glad I was, I was on for the ride and we'll continue to do so. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I've known... Can I call you Dre or do you want me to call you Dre? Because that's what I call you. Uh, Dre's fine. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Dre, Dr. Dre, Dre yeah. Day, <laughs> all day. Uh, I want to get right to the point because, Dre, we don't do long podcast forums anymore. I like to get right to the point. And then, you know, maybe towards the end, we can talk about whatever we want. But I... 
mold expert. I consider you water mitigation expert. That's how we met. You know firsthand through experience through several hurricanes, especially now this last one with Hurricane Ian, you know what it takes to make sure a home is properly protected immediately after a loss. On top of that, I feel that since we've gotten to know each other, you've gone next level with your knowledge on mold and sort of what can happen as a result of that. So I want to get right to it. Uh, and I really want to just get into, get into mold coverage because it's a very complicated thing, right? You know, yeah. uh, what, what classifies as mold coverage? Is that the cause of loss or did it start with water? What are the limits of mold? Why does it say 10 slash 50 on it? Like all these different things. What is, do you feel is one of the most common questions that you get in regards to mold as to what on throughout that process, whether that be from a public adjuster or a client, what's one of the most sort of common questions and concerns that you get from someone when you walk into a house? Uh, usually it's the health concerns. Uh, the first thing they'll tell me is, oh, I see this. I think this is black mold um, because that's the four letter word, mold. So when someone hears mold, they freak out. A lot of people don't realize that every home has mold. Every single house has mold. What we're concerned about is the high concentration of mold compared to the outside environment. That's when it can start to affect you, especially if people have uh, low immune systems or they have respiratory issues. There's a small percentage of them that the mold will affect them. But since every body reacts differently, it's impossible to tell, depending on how much mold is in the house, how it's going to affect every individual. So we have to do a blanket standard uh, for that to be the case. So even though no one's sniffling, sneezing, having all these symptoms, if they still have an elevated um, amount of mold spores in a particular room or in their house, we need to remediate it uh, appropriately to get that out of there. Now, some people listen to this on YouTube. Some people listen to this um, in their car. So if you're one that's listening into your car, you're not going to be able to really take advantage. But I will do my best to help Dre really just sort of to help you guys sort of see what we're looking at. I decided to get one of one of the mold reports uh, that he put together. Not a, not a mold report, but just a, re a results report after taking the test examples. And I know a lot of us, even public adjuster, even me, I've been doing this forever and a day. And I look at this thing and I'm like, I, I I don't understand what the hell this thing is really telling me. So I've got here, you know, we've got this chart. It's a report code. It's got the whole chart of everything. And it's got stuff like Aspirillus, Chaitomium, Statchy Boots. Oh, Statchy Botrys. I thought I said Statchy <laughs> Boots. All terrainial. What, what am I looking at here? What, what does all of this mean? And I see percentages and I see like a raw count, but I see two different sec Oh, outside bedroom, bedroom. How is it that we are supposed to look at this? What the hell am I looking at? So that I don't always have to call you or go to you when I get something like this. Although that I know Dre is all about, it. if you have any questions, you could call him. He'll be happy to answer. But how do I read one of these? What, what am I looking at? Well, you're looking at your basic uh, lab report. This comes from certified labs. When we go and we assess um, a house for mold, under no circumstances, we classify anything that we see as mold. We simply take samples, uh, take pictures, take all the data necessary, and then we send everything off to the lab. And then the lab gives us these type of results here. Now, all these different types of, of um, species of mold is all classified here that can be encountered in the home and also outside. So you would see... The breakdown is, is the actual raw count, and then right next to it is called the spore count. The spore count is what we're concerned about. Right now, the average more or less range is about a 400 spore count and above will be concerned as elevated. Anything, anything above, I would say uh, from 700 and above is, is of vast concern. Um, I've got here, so, I'm looking at, I'm looking at class is at 2,640. Yes, th that is your outside, uh, which is your control. And that's how normally mold is in, is, is, in, is in the wild. So this is what we're testing outside. Now, if these numbers were less than what's inside your home, then there's a grave problem. That means we have a large mold issue. Mm -hmm. And there's only two things that mold needs to grow, is water and organic material. So the first thing we look for, mold is usually... The, the cause, 
Um, well, I mean, is the effect, but it's not the cause. So as soon as you see mold, we have an issue of water intruding somewhere, somehow. I want to interrupt you real quick because this is a common question that I get from public adjusters. Well, I should file a mold claim. I should file a mold claim. Do I file? How do I file a mold claim? And I always tell people, you're not filing a mold claim. You're filing a water damage claim. The mold is as a result of water damage because what happens a lot of times is people will say what we used to call the M word and the insurance company would jump all over it. And be like, oh, you have a mold claim? Okay, sorry, cat, ten thousand dollars. We're not paying more than that. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Correct. You now technically have two sides to the claim. We've got the water damage portion, which is the portion where it all started and where the damage occurred, and you know all that stuff. And then you have the mold portion. What's included in the actual mold? If I have a claim, Dre, where I'm filing the, I'm filing a water damage claim, but I'm also filing mold. What? exactly is part of that mold coverage? Well, the actual mold coverage is the testing and the remediation, the removal process right. of, of the actual mold. And then there's a clearance afterwards to make sure that the levels are acceptable as opposed to your control outside. <clears throat> so I want to be clear on one more thing. Sorry for interrupting you again. What? And it's the remediation of the mold portion and Correct. then it's the clearance test. The mold portion could just be, you know, it could just be a piece of uh, a piece of drywall in the closet and maybe one baseboard. The removal of that and then probably some machines and stuff. Correct. Uh, yes. Which is uh, mostly what we use is HEPA scrubbers, which will remove as much as the, um, the, 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 the mold spores that are in the air. It, it goes through a micron filter. And it recirculates the air over and over so those filters can capture that mold. And also, uh, depending on how much contamination is there, there's certain chemicals that we use that can clean it and also an encapsulant so we can seal it. So mold is going to include the mold tests. So now we know where the mold is to remove the yeah. mold. If it's drywall, baseboard, and let's say, let's call it a couple uh, a, a couple planks of wood floor, remove that. And then we do the clearance test to make sure it's all gone. What I want public adjusters and I want homeowners to understand is if that wood floor that was removed as part of the mold remediation process is continuous throughout the whole home, that now falls back on your coverage, a water damage to remove all the rest of that floor and then to obviously build back everything. And that, that includes build back of what was removed for the mold coverage a, which is the, I'm just talking about the water damage portion will include the build back right. of that drywall of that baseboard and of those two planks as well. Yes. Uh, because remember when a mold assessment is done, it's done visually. We don't know what's behind those walls just because we see some small staining here and there. That's why we test. And then if we see if it's, an, it's, uh, it's elevated, when the remediators come and they open that wall and they see that <clears throat> the whole eight foot wall is contaminated, well, they have to remove all that contamination um, past two feet past that. So if it continues going up and up and up, well, that's more stuff that will need to be replaced later on. <clears throat> um. Mold glossary, is this, what is this? Is this kind of just to explain what some of these things are? Correct. Uh, it, it gives you a real basic generic definition of each one, um, what kind of, you know, how it grows, just very, very basic stuff. One of the main things that we look at, especially when it comes to insurance claims, are, uh, which are very on, on, on the very, very top of the mold report, which is called aspergillus, and also stachybatris, which is the, the, you know, the infamous black mold. Oh, so, so stacky batteries, that's black mold. Yes, correct. That that's black mold. Right and then aspergillus, yeah, aspergillus is, is a very common mold inside homes, but at a concentrated level, uh, th th it could be a, a very big problem because that means you have with those two types of molds, you're going to have a large amount of water loss. Um, and it's, and it's covering a lot of organic material. So, you know, it's usually like, a lot of wood, uh, drywall, insulation, things of that nature. Okay. And then after this comes, right, then you put together a protocol, right? Correct. Which, um, based on the findings, 
that, uh, that we get from the lab. Then we drop a report with pictures, thermal readings, all that good stuff, explaining, okay, this is where the source of water is. It's been here for at least more than 48 hours. This is the type of mold that we found, and this is our recommendations on its removal, uh, which would entail uh, removal using uh, different types of chemicals, doing uh, containment, using HEPA scrubbers. It's very, very detailed um, because I cannot do the remediation because that would be considered a conflict of interest. So we usually would source it out to other remediation companies, and they'll come in and do it. Once it's done, then I return so I can go ahead and do uh, the clearance test. Everybody needs an attorney on their side. So whether you're a public adjuster, a contractor, or anyone else in the insurance claims business, make sure that you have an attorney that you could rely on, that you can go to for questions whenever you need it. That guy for me for the last 12 years has been David Farber. David Farber is the owner of the Farber Law Firm, and he has been there for me from the beginning of my career until now. And I would love for him to be able to help you as well. So make sure you call him at this number here and visit his website so you can learn more about the amazing David Farber of the Farber Law Firm. I'm going to share a mold protocol with you. This was not from you. And don't worry, I don't, you tell me, well, I have, I see, I don't want to put the company name on there. So, all right. Um, I'm going to share also, just so maybe we could just go through it real quick a little bit. I think this would be pretty cool. You see it here? So we've got here, when I arrived in the scene, there was water damage caused by water mitigation needed for the following affected rooms, content, is this sort of like this? Is it come? Do you usually do it like this in a paragraph form? Oh, look, it even has here, remove and discard affected wallboard, remove and discard affected baseboard. Is this sort of how you put it together as well? Uh, yeah, that's a part of my protocol. Um, I'm, well, my office is extremely thorough. So we, we, we back everything up with uh, our meter readings, thermal readings, photos, uh, you name right. it. We, we make it as detailed as possible. Yeah, I will suggest anybody that needs like a good mold protocol mold report i mean uh yeah undresses and all-stars report is second to none it's just super detailed you see all the moisture readings you see all the detailed photos you see everything that you need to ultimately help you know also prove your case to the insurance company and make sure that you know it's being done correctly and then you mention i think another confusing thing that a lot of people just starting out don't really understand is that you're not allowed to do the remediation correct yeah, for, uh, for insurance purposes and, and just for basic, uh, basic, you know, for ethics, um, it's always good to have a second company in because if I go in, I test it, say that's elevated, I go ahead and remove it. Well, if I'm doing the clearance, of course, I mean, it, it, it only comes to, to, it only makes sense that, you know, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, it happened to clear. So it's like, no, you always use a third party um, to just keep things fair. And for the insurance company, they assist the upon. And um, I, I think that's a good way to go. That keeps everybody on their toes and that's a good checks and balances. Is it just, I, I would say it's more important probably for the clearance than it is for the actual remediation and the mold testing. Well, the, I mean, it, it, all, it all goes together because we cannot recommend any remediation unless we do a test. And with that assessment, that's what we use for the insurance company in order to open up the coverage. And then with the remediation, it has to be done properly. You know, a lot of people think it's just like your ordinary demo, and it's not. I mean, we're talking about we're, we're, we're sealing air vents. We're, we're you know, we're, we're sealing up a room, kind of like a little, like, like in a hermetic seal jar <laughs> to make sure nothing comes in to that area while we're testing. So, and then, then of course, the clearance will therefore say, okay, everything is good, everything's back to normal. And then they're able to go ahead and close out their clean, you know, if it's only you know, a, a mold issue. <clears throat> right, right, right. And let me tell you, some of these things that I've seen, some of these, some of these re mold remediations are freaking intense. I'm going to show you one that um, Andres and I were a part of that was just like, whoa, man, like I'm talking like some really cool stuff. I don't want to put the company name on here either. Oh, I kind of have it on there, but uh, we've got some really nice remediation there talking about all the, pla look at people have mat suits and stuff and you see all the black mold here. 
Really, really good. And then you could see all the mold right up here inside of this closet. This turned out to be, you know, it's just like a little one, one little closet that had it. But man, the containment that these guys did on this was just so great. I mean, you could see it here. It's just super intense with everything that was done and making sure. And this is, I remember we had a, we had a concerned client, you know, they had some medical issues and stuff. We want to make sure that we were doing everything we could to, to probably really remediate this stuff. Remember this one? Oh yeah, yeah. Quite well. As a matter of fact, um, He's one of the remediators that I use on a regular basis. This guy's extremely thorough. That's why I, I, I really like working with, uh, especially uh, this particular guy right here. And, and as you can see, he, he uses uh, HEPA vacuums. He's sealing up every entrance properly. He, um, even with the kind of chemicals that he's using, show you how toxic they are. He has to wear a Tyvek suit and he has to have a respirator on because the, uh, these chemicals are very strong. They're concentrated peroxides and things of that nature. And uh, for someone that has health issues, which this particular um, client stated that she had, it had to be very thorough and clean. And he, he did a fantastic job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's funky. It's funky how it goes. What about when I always get the question, the 10, f um, if I, I know State Farm policies, most of them do not have mold coverage. But what is it that people need to be looking out for, uh, customers, homeowners, and, and public adjusters, uh, to make sure that, that there is indeed mold coverage? It's very, very important um, that they have mold coverage. I mean, I, I've, I've encountered some uh, that were under litigation, and I was brought in after the litigation was already in process. And uh, they brought us in to do a mold assessment, then come to find out there was no coverage. And it, I, I find that hard to believe, but uh, your basic mold coverage is ten thousand uh, dollars. Now, I've seen larger homes, newer larger homes that would have that same amount of of cap, and I guess that only has to deal with oh well, if you want to pay a lower premium, that's what you get. But these larger homes is always best to scale up and get the proper coverage because uh, if your roof goes and that whole ceiling goes, and you're talking about maybe a four thousand square foot home. It's going to go way past that ten thousand dollar cap, and the insurance company is expecting the client to pay out of pocket. And these type of jobs are not cheap. I mean, we're we're easily a four thousand square foot home, depending on how much coverage there, how much contamination is, can go into a uh, you know a couple tens of thousands of dollars. I had been looking for an accountant for years and I was unable to find anybody that I liked, that I worked with and was able to do what I needed to be done to my taxes and to my accountant. Jeremy David at Noble Wealth has been a godsend to me, my family and my company. We have saved so much money in taxes I can't even begin to describe and he knows what he's doing. You need to call Jeremy at Noble Wealth and get yourself the right accountant because he's the man who's going to help you save on taxes because ultimately you don't want to be making money, especially if you're self-employed and having it all go to the the IRS. Call Jeremy, call Noble Wealth, and they will help you tremendously with the entire accounting process and your tax situation from A to Z. I would advise on most water damage claims, whether you physically see the mold or not, that a mold test be performed. You're, you're nodding your head. Yes, I would assume you would, yes. you would agree. Yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. Um, mold could start forming even as little as 48 hours. Right. Mold could start uh, uh, on, on standing water. Um, if, if, the, if, the, um, if the water damage started getting uh, treated immediately, which means that the client has actual fans and stuff like that, there's a good chance they could dry it out beforehand. But usually by the time a claim gets uh, called in, it gets recorded, and anyone gets out there to do something, it's already about three or four days. So depending how much uh, water damage they have, they already have them before we even get there. Now we just have to assess how much is it and if that's going to be a potential problem. Um, what was it I wanted to say was, uh, man, I lost my train of thought because it kind of froze there for a second. But what I really wanted to explain was that don't allow, you mentioned the 48 hours. I think it's interesting because I've had in the past, so two things. I've had claims get denied just to, just because of the simple fact that there's mold. Insurance company automatically thinks long term wear and tear. It's been happening for a long time. <laughs> oh yeah, we already we yeah. know now. Andres has explained to us it takes forty eight hours for mold to grow. That's number one. Number two is I know a lot of public adjusters that will shy away. We'll go away from claim. Oh, there's mold. Oh, that's been happening for a long time. I'm not gonna. Don't file it. Don't sign it. I'm not doing that claim. 
that's not the case. Yeah, for, for, for a lot that don't understand the process, um, a lot of them will just say, like you said, oh, that's been going forever. And that, that's not necessarily the case. Um, these are organic uh, beings. They all grow differently. They all spread differently. So for one house in 48 hours, mold can grow. Well, it feels under a hurricane situation and, and it's been raining nonstop for, let's say, for six hours. Well, that mold is going to be even more stronger, even more intense in a shorter period of time. Right. So it, there's no test out there that can tell you how old mold is. All it can do is identify what it is and how much of it. But that, there is no, there's, there's no test to verify, you know, how, oh, this test shows it's been here for over a year. That It doesn't exist. <clears throat> And you have to do the test to actually confirm whether it's mold or not, because the old eyeball tests, according to factual documentation, will not cut it. Oh, no, no I have no. mold. No, we got to test it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We can say something looks uh, suspect. I mean, I've been doing this long enough that I could more or less eyeball it. But, you, you know, since we're dealing with people's homes, there's going to be a permanent record on the home. If they're going to try and sell it. This is something that needs to be disclosed. So we have to make sure that we back it up instead of just screaming it out. Here's something here that looks suspect. The way we'll know for sure if we test it. Um, that's the surefire way. Then once the results come, then we can assess what it is. Um, I know that th there's a lot of companies out there, unfortunately, that will use that as a ploy so they can get the job. Um, but that's not the right way to go. You know, you just don't walk into someone's home and just start screaming, oh, my God, that's mold. You're going to die. Yeah. And if you give me five grand, I'll take care of it. And he's like, no, that's that's not what we're going to do. here. We're going to test things properly and then we'll assess it. Sometimes when we test it, it's under the bogey. It's clean. And we could happily tell them, hey, you're OK. There's just a small little thing right here. That's something you could easily repair yourself or if you want a general contractor or a painter, whatever you want. And that's that. And, you know, there are a lot of times we had those situations. Um, and then there were some that we found out it wound up being a lot worse than what we expected. And, you know, we had to go further. Yeah. Who would have thought, Dre, who would have thought? How long have we known each other now? Let's see here. Uh, almost three years, maybe. It feels like a long time, though. It feels like a lot longer than that. Well, not because it's not because it's dragged out. It's just because we become very close, you know? Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I mean, th th things kind of uh, kicked off the right way. Uh, we think alike. You know, when, when it comes to our clients, when it comes to our fellow colleagues, you know, we're, we're very loyal um, and, and we stick to it. You know, we, 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 we have the same mantra that we had from the very beginning. We're here to take care of the clients. We're here to do what's right because we know the money's going to come regardless. Exactly. Although now things are getting a little bit more difficult, but we're going to stick to, we're going to stay on the course. Well, I mean, it's true. We've always said, we've always agreed that the claims are always there. There's always claims out there. There's always money to be made out there. As long as we keep client focused and do whatever we can for the client, the money will come eventually. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I felt like that from the very beginning and I still feel the same way. I still have clients call me from claims I did a year, year and a half ago. Oh, my son has an issue. And I remember what you did. Can you please come over? And I'm like, Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. You know, when, when, when you provide um, excellent customer service, clients remember. Exactly. And they will call back. They always call back. <laughs> how do you, how'd you turn out with the hurricane? Hurricane Ian, how to use, I'm sure you're still busy as all hell like I am, but you know, oh, how was that experience no, no, it, for you? <sighs> wow. It was a lot fast. Uh, but then again, I had prior experience to it. So I was kind of, I was kind of ready for it. And uh, it, was, it was easiest for me to mobilize since it was kind of in my backyard. I really didn't have to travel that far. I didn't have to, you know, organize a trailer and all that kind of nonsense. All we had to do was maybe drive an hour and a half. And uh, since I have plenty of family, everybody joined in and we just went in like an army. And it's, we're still doing that to this day. I have them dispatched huh, right now all through uh, Northport, uh, Cape Coral, even some parts of Orlando that got hit with the second storm that came through, which there was a lot of, a lot of flooding that no one didn't expect. Um, so yeah, we're, we're a little bit everywhere right now. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of making sure everything runs in a straight line and taking care of this paperwork, but yeah, it, it's, it hasn't stopped. 
It hasn't stopped, hasn't right? Stopped. It just keeps going. And then with all the denials that these clients are getting, because a lot of clients thought, oh, I could build the insurance on my own. And as soon as they get the denial, here come the phone calls. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was denied what I'm going to do. Oh, I, I know what you can do. Yeah. And that's when I'll call my man Vince. <laughs> yeah, I, I call everybody. At, or and, Nick. <laughs> or, or Nick, you know. So, <laughs> you know, and, we, and it usually happens that way because a, a, a lot of people – Thanks to the powers that be labeled us as, 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 as pirates. So people are afraid of us. But as soon as they get denied, we're the ones they come running to. And exactly. then we resolve their issue and they get paid. <laughs> well, are you surprised at all this fraud that's going on on the insurance company side? Oh, no. We've been screaming about this forever. It's just that no one decided to listen to us until it got to this point. And even then, they, they'll try and deny it. And they're going to play their game. I mean, sooner or later, homeowners are going to stand up because a lot of them are right now, and they're mad. You know, they, they have half a home. You know, they're still living in a trailer in front of their house. You know, they're sleeping in tents in front of their house, and the insurance company still have yet to go and do a simple inspection, let alone anything else. We're talking about four or five months since the storm. You know, so for everyone that thought that this was a good idea, yeah, it, it when it happens to you, it's a totally different start. Right. And we have plenty of clients that have that same mantra. They're going through the same thing and they're, going, they, they, they're making them jump through the same hoops. And it's, it's, it's downright disgusting. So are you feeling about all the changes in the industry and all the law changes and all the crap that's going on? Unfortunately, uh, to me, it's kind of like a pendulum. It, it goes extremely one way, that, then in order for them to compensate, they go extremely the other way. Do we have fraud in our, in our industry? Absolutely. Like almost like in every industry, we're yep. nobody special. We don't have the magic key that we're able to make all these loopholes appear and all this stuff. We're only working within the confines of the policy. That's it. And this is the policy that the insurance companies drew up. So all we're doing is bringing it to their attention Hey, this is the words you put down here. You need to honor it. Now, yes, there's fraud. Yes, there's, in some cases, unnecessary litigation. Yes, absolutely, that's happened. But to go from one extreme to the other, where now you're just going to take away rights from the policy owners completely and have them at the mercy of the insurance company, that's just going way too far. There's no checks and balances involved. In other words, and, and on top of that, if there's any propriety, they're policing themselves. How is that going to work? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's annoying. Uh, but you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, this industry can't go away. It it won't go away and people need help no matter what, you know, and people need to mitigate. There's always going to be damages. There's always going to be claims. There's always going to be storms. There's always going to be things uh, that are going to happen. And no matter what they could do to, 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 do whatever they want to come against us. Ultimately, you know, it's a, it's a necessary evil that we are in a way in order to fight back. (laughs) No, I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, when, people, when people really start to see how it's affected everyday people in their everyday lives, that's when this nonsense it, it will get corrected. It just won't be anytime soon. So it, it's just a matter of just holding on and we continue to help these clients. We're going to continue to show overwhelming evidence that this incident happened, how it happened, why it happened, and this is what we need to recommend to get it resolved. Um, we're going to continue this fight regardless. Um, and it's not going to stop. And hopefully a lot of these policy owners are going to really open their eyes when it comes time to voting. That's one of the first issues that needs to be addressed. How are these lawmakers going to address, you know, the, uh, this situation that we have here in Florida? Because the hurricanes aren't going to stop just because we have a, a, an industry crisis. Right. Hurricanes don't care. Hurricanes don't care. Yeah. They're going to come when they come. And Insurance companies are going to continue to sell policies and clients are going to need it because if they had the money to repair their homes, they wouldn't buy insurance. Right. Right. So uh, it's just unfortunate for right now, but I, I, I think eventually we, we, it will swing back and hopefully it'll be somewhere down the middle. So it could be fair on both ends. You know, we're not here advocating that it needs to be 100% our way. And now we have control. No, we need something that's fair. The insurance company needs to make a profit. Fine, they're a business. But at the same time, they need to honor their policy. You made a deal, stick to the deal. It's a very, very simple concept. 
<laughs> exactly. But who would have thought three years later, having a couple beers at a brewery, did you think that we would be able to take this to where we are now? Did you think when we were sitting down, did I even have the YouTube channel yet? I did. Yeah, right? you just started. You just, just started. You, you did, did a couple. Did you think of- I was crazy? Like Mario Reels tells me, he's like, I thought you were crazy. No, from the very first time you, you sat down and you told me what you wanted to do. I told you, and I don't know if you remember, but I told you, I said, dude, I think that's going to work. Just put a lot of content. I, I remember when you first started off uh, doing the content with uh, my father-in-law uh, and my dog. And, and, and with Max. With Max? <laughs> so well, I, that's just recently now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, which I thought was adorable. <laughs> but um, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just that I remember from back then, I saw the potential. I saw what you were thinking because it was exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, I was like, this is the message that needs to get put out there. We need to let these clients know. We need to let all these other public adjusters know. There's a way to do this the right way. There's a way that we could do this with the policy owner, you know, concerns in mind. We need to focus on the client. Right. You know, they're going through enough already. You know, they have all this damage. They don't know what to do. All that they know is, well, I have insurance. Yep. That's all they know. And, and no one to help them navigate it because now they're at the mercy of the insurance company. And that's where we can come in and be like, no, let's just make sure that we're here to just make sure this is going to be a fair process. That's it. We're not here to do anything else because we're not allowed to do anything else. Right. It's, okay, it's we're going, that simple. We're going to L.A. this year. I I heard L.A., New York. L.A., New York, and then back to the (laughs) M.I.A.O. Miami's going to be crazy. I remember last year. Last year was was extremely, extremely fun. Um, I was able to reconnect with a lot of public adjusters. You know, thank God through this conduit. uh, I personally has been, I've been able to network with so many people that I know under normal circumstances, I would never even have the opportunity to, to meet at all. And um, it, 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 it's been a fantastic ride. And I told you from the very beginning, I, I believe in this movement. I know this movement is going to gain traction. And lo and behold, it, it has exploded and it's expanded. Uh, and again, I'll say the same thing. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Little by little, one day at a time is how they say. Patience, patience, yep. patience. But... <laughs> There's so much more that can be done. Our industry changes every month. There's always, every month. Always, always it changes all the time. Everywhere. It changes all the time. And, and uh, you know, we, we have to stay in front of it because um, as we diversify, that's what's going to allow us to survive in this business. I got to get you a shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got to get you a shirt. Definitely. Well, Dre, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for being one of the uh, original originators here who uh, who was has been on this journey with me since the beginning. I want to thank you for always taking care of my clients that I've referred you. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you, man. For those that don't know, Andres' nephew works at Elite Resolutions. Yep, but- yep, yep. Nick. I do. I do want to thank you for all your support, man. Um, and yes, shout out and my love to your wife and to your son and to your family. And uh, we need to hang out soon in person. No, no, we, 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 we definitely, we definitely do it. It's long overdue ever since the hurricane. I mean, this shit hasn't stopped and, and it, it, it's been driving me absolutely crazy uh, because if, if I'm not on the phone, I'm in a meeting, I'm here, I'm there. But yes, we, de- we definitely need to just unplug. We have some drinks, smoke some cigars, we relax. You know, my, my love goes to, uh, to you and definitely your family. Um, and like I said, man, this is only the beginning. It, it's, we're going to keep at it. It's not going to stop. We're, we're going to keep at it. Yeah, it's too bad. Usually Max tries to walk in, but I don't know where he's at. He might be outside or something like that. But <laughs> All right, Dre. Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you. All righty.